I've got Andy Kinworthy here and he's got a very unique engine. Okay, first of all, what in the world is this engine from? This is from our 1933 Derby uh -huh. L8. It's the uh, front wheel drive car, 1933. The V8, you can either run these four cylinders or you can run these four cylinders or you can run all eight together, 1933. Wait yeah. a minute. Okay, so you're going to have to explain how they engineered that. Okay, so basically possible. what it is, is there's a carburetor on each side. The yep. intake is actually casted into the block. Okay, so it's coming in. in and then there. and here's your intake ports here and here. Okay. Okay, so basically here's your intake, intake valve, intake valve, intake valve. And the exhaust valves are on the cylinder head. And okay. they're operated with push rods. The intake valves are actually manually operated on the camshaft itself. Okay, wow. All right, so the carburetor allows the mixture in. Uh, basically what you're doing is, you're, all yeah. you're doing is disconnecting the coil. That's okay. okay. So the fuel still is coming, but the problem, the thing of it is, is being that the intake is casted in both, uh, both sides, yep. when you shut down one side, the CFM take over and they draw from one side of one carburetor at a time. Okay. So the pistons still go up and down, yep. but it eliminates the vacuum and pulls it to one side. Okay, so, so without the vacuum, the carburetor kind of is, by definition, inoperable. Exactly. Of? Okay, so. interesting. So, okay, so where are the exhaust valves? The exhaust valves are actually in the cylinder head. They're on top. I can okay. go get you one right here. All right, let's have a look. Here's basically your exhaust cylinder head, and all your exhaust valves are on one side. Okay, so there's the valves up there. And there's where your exhaust manifolds go. And the manifolds there. And on the very top. Wow. And what year again was this? 1933. 1933. And so they had a a choice of either four cylinder or a V8 yep. in 1933. They used it to save fuel because the car was actually raced in, at Le Mans. Really? Yeah. And a female, she actually still holds records today in France. So. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the other car uh, also unique because it has uh, adjustable shocks, friction shocks where I've never seen before. And actually has brake bias, cable brake, brake bias, 1933. Okay, so how did the brake bias work? Brake bias works is uh, there's cables mm -hmm. on one front, one rear. Yep. And then there's a pulley with the arm. So as you turn the rod, it moves the rod over with the pulley to tighten up the cable, which in turn makes it apply before the other side. Okay, so from inside the cockpit of the car. You can actually adjust you can brake kind bias. Of, okay. Yeah crazy. All right. And what about the shocks that you said were uh, The friction shocks, basically it's on a uh, cable and it, it pulls the wheel. And as it pulls internally, it actually turns the arm and actually pulls it in to make that friction shock tighter. Okay. So, so that's how you could adjust yep. the shock on that. Yep. All right. And now what is the goal going back to this engine? What are you doing to it? What's happening? With uh, right it? now we're trying to set the clutch up. Okay. Um, the clutch is kind of unique because it has double plate you have a disc the flywheel you have an internal which holds the pressure plate would say okay and then your springs would go on this side with uh -huh. a snap ring would hold everything together okay and so you're just getting that set i'm up just getting ready to line everything up right now so I'm now just, is this, so is this engine going back together this is, that is going back together actually it was uh it's been apart for five years Okay. Because it was actually a design flaw. That's why it's the only one left in the world. So when I got it running before, uh -huh. so when it heats up, this actually expands. Right. And it starts leaking water there. Uh, so we actually we took it all apart and we yep. cast welded a brace here and brace here and around the bottom to kind of stiffen this up. Right. Yeah. Because if it was just the perimeter of the plate, there's nothing not to hold, hold it. it. And, just, and this see. is the water jacket. So everything, you know, you yeah. can see the water jacket is all on one side. Yes. And there's hardly any material. Very little, okay. yeah, you're yeah. right. Wow, so you, you were <laughs> fixing an engineering flaw from 90 years yeah. ago? Yeah, yep. So <laughs> that's what I do, make them run and drive there you so go. they can enjoy them. Well, the joy of this is you're taking a car that otherwise would just sit. Yeah. And probably has just sat for it many has. years. Yeah, and then we're going to, we drive. Everything in the collection, the we run and drive. Right on. So we don't, you know. So do you happen to know, now we, you mentioned this is a, a race car, a yep. Le Mans winning car. I'm not sure if it was a winner. Well, maybe or not. It didn't, but it ran a, a Le Mans. Yes, it ran so, a Le Mans. So uh, that's it's understandable having a V8. I wonder why they wanted a four-cylinder option. Oh, uh, because fuel safe. So even on a, in a race car, you still saving fuel. Okay. You know, because Le Mans, it's a pretty big track. Yes. And you know what I mean. If you can save a gallon a lap, 
Okay. You know what I mean? Fair that, enough. That's quite a bit. So, yeah. You know. Fair enough. I hadn't thought they would even be worried Probably about that. Problem is nutrition back then wasn't very good either. So as far as the car lasting. Right, right. So, you know. That's right. And if you could keep it, and if you could pick one side or the other, maybe if you had a problem on one bank. Of, or at, at that side too. Maybe you, you, you maybe dropped a valve. Yeah. You know, it's still run. You know what I mean? So <laughs> broke a valve spring, something like that. It's still run one side. Right. So. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, it's pretty unique. Yeah. Wow. And let's see, is there anything interesting about the front? Is it a crank start? So it, uh, it has a starter. Oh, on the, the other starter's side there. there. I yep. see it. Okay, uh, you're right. This is actually the front of the engine, and then yep. this is the, so it's front wheel drive. So okay, this is right. basically the front. And okay. everything's back there is going to be the, uh, just the drive for the speedo cable. Okay. And then on the back side over here uh, is where the generator goes. Uh-huh. And on the back side of the generator is the water pump. Okay, and, did, and what about the electrical side of it? How did that uh, work? Electrical side is just a distributor. Okay. And then uh, basically it's a double rotor. Uh-huh. And then you have four on the inside and four on the outside. And all you're doing is killing the coil. And when you kill the coil, you still have the outside or the inside, depending on which one you want to run. Interesting. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've never encountered anything like yeah. that. And That's... it has such a weird firing order. You know, you, you, you take one plug wire off and see what happens. Now you take four and then, you know, see on a V8 and you just You're shake done. your teeth out. It's not here. <laughs> and it runs smooth as glass. That's... It's crazy. So it has a weird firing order. It took a while to figure out the firing order. I'll bet. Because right? it's not like a normal firing order. So. Well, I'm gonna have to come back when this is running and, yep. and listen to it run. Yeah, it's cool. That's that cool is car. wild. Yeah. Well, Andy, thanks for showing You're that to welcome. us. Appreciate that. Yep.